In the pre-dawn hours of June 6, 1944, American, British, and Canadian troops under the command of Texas-born General Dwight D. Eisenhower launched the long-awaited Allied invasion to liberate Northwest Europe from the oppression of Nazi Germany. Known then and now as D-Day, it began when 23,400 British and American paratroopers dropped on the flanks of the five invasion beaches in Normandy, which were codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. These airborne forces were followed by the largest seaborne landing in history, 75,000 British and Canadian and 57,500 Americans for a total of 156,000 soldiers put ashore on D-Day. Many would be killed or wounded, some 4,300 British and Canadians and 6,000 Americans in all. Within a week, the 50-mile-long beachhead had been secured by the Allies and the liberation of Western Europe was assured. The tide of history had been turned toward the world order envisioned by President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Winston Churchill, which has maintained the general peace without a major war ever since. In 2019, the government of France made plans to welcome the world for a magnificent celebratory and commemorative event, and the Longhorn Alumni Band participated in a very significant way. In true University of Texas style, 535 alumni band members and their families prepared to travel to those same beaches in Normandy. We will accept nothing less than full victory. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. So on June 6, 1944, my dad turned 13 years old. And he was in German-occupied Hungary at the time. And uh, on his 13th birthday, a few days afterwards, they heard the, the news of the Americans landing in Europe. And he wondered, would it be in time to save his family? Later that year, 1945, his family was deported to Auschwitz. And he later escaped Auschwitz and ended up in Buchenwald to be liberated by the same army that landed in D-Day in April of 1945. And so he had just turned about, uh, was about to turn 14 years old. So from his 13th birthday to his 14th birthday, survived the Nazi concentration camps to be liberated by the United States Army that landed on D-Day on June 6, 1944. And so when we remember D-Day and we remember the Americans and soldiers uh, fighting that war for freedom, uh, it is so important uh, that you all be there to represent the University of Texas in that commemoration because it is so important to what we value as, as a country and certainly what we value here as, at the University of Texas. And you are wonderful representatives of this great, uh, this great university and this great state. As an officer of the alumni band, we're presented challenges every year to bring together 600, 800, 1,000 of our alumni together each year for band day. Um, just doing that is, is quite a feat. So when the word came out that the Normandy trip was gonna be in the planning, my natural instinct was to say, yes, this is something that I can do. I got to know the Longhorn Band, alumni band, when I was on the Board of Regents from 2001 to 2008 and uh, went to several events and, and started to get an appreciation for uh, how much it meant to the university, what a tremendous organization it was across the country and even around the world. The University of Texas slogan, what starts here changes the world. It's a, it's a powerful uh, slogan, it's a bold claim for sure. And when we think about this Normandy trip, uh, certainly that slogan applies to the place where we were, quite independent of the University of Texas. Truly what happened in that place changed the course of history for many, 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 many people around the world. Look what we were able to accomplish. Um, look what the band did. Look what the opportunity that we were provided and the exposure that we could give not only the alumni band, but to the Longhorn Band family. 
uh, as well as to the University of Texas, uh, to the state of Texas, and most importantly representing the United States at an event that was most historic. It was the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Our, our first rehearsal together, it, it was great. It was fun. It was uh, one of my favorite rehearsals ever. And I'll say that some of the best memories that I have in my time with the Longhorn Band are rehearsals that we've had under less than ideal circumstances. <clears throat> How many of you were scared of your middle school band director? <laughs> I know I was. It's like, Four foot four, and I am still terrified of her. If you were scared of your middle school band director, or just pretend you had my middle school band director, if you would imagine that they are staring at the key signature of that piece <laughs> right behind you, and then playing in tune really well, that one it's not it's not very in tune right now. So let's let's try to do better on that one. One more time. It's easy to have a good rehearsal when everything's going great and you know the weather cooperates or we're inside or whatever it is. But to have a rehearsal at the end of a day when everyone's been traveling internationally and then driving for several hours and moving lots of things around and it's been raining and all of those sorts of things, to come together and to get to work on music and really put all of that aside at the end of a day like that, I find those to be some of my most favorite ones and this was no exception people were they had good attitudes about stuff they were uh, they were positive maybe they were a little giddy from being sleep deprived or whatever it was uh, but it was it was a great experience when we kicked off registration for the Normandy trip the alumni band came in droves we predicted that we might be able to get two to 250 tops if we were really lucky. The operators continually told us, um, you know, you guys have a big band. And I kept replying back to them, and so did Bill. We would say, what's a, one of our smaller bands? <laughs> Down, two, three, check. Round, two, three, check. Switch hands, two, three, check. Up, two, three, check. We're all different places. As president of the organization, knowing that I've got 535 people that are going to convene in one central location on one day prior to the biggest day um, in 75 years in Normandy's history was a little bit taxing for me. Um, but I had the faith that everything that we had done, all the planning that was, uh, took place, that we could get everybody in that hotel that night to do that rehearsal. Um, that was the first time that everybody had come together. We had had two previous rehearsals here at the band hall that Dr. Hannah put together. Probably maybe half of the entire band that was going to perform in Normandy was at those rehearsals. So there was a still there was still part of me that was a little bit concerned that we've got an entire band that's going to show up in one place the day before we're supposed to perform. And it's the first opportunity that we have to perform and practice together. Uh, and um, that was a pretty incredible uh, rehearsal. That rehearsal was interesting because it was, it was outside in a public space, uh, which is not our usual bit with the Longhorn Band family.
So obviously there were, uh, there were witnesses to the rehearsal, if you will, and I think that it was an interesting mixture of people being curious and saying, gosh, what the heck is that sound that's going on over there? And then maybe people who were along with us, you know, our, our friends and families who were not the performers, but sort of hanging out of their hotel rooms and on their balconies cheering us on and, you know, shouting Texas fight. Uh, again, that's uh, a little bit of a surreal thing to be in Normandy, France, and having taken our Longhorn spirit over there. The first performance of the Longhorn Alumni Band was in the Brittany American Cemetery as part of an impressive wreath laying ceremony that included nine World War II veterans who participated in the D-Day invasion, sharing their personal stories. Several high school bands from the United States, the New York Police Department Emerald Society Pipes and Drums, and the Sound of the Rockies Men's Choir from Colorado. Dr. Scott Hanna conducted over 1,200 musicians in the ceremony's finale musical performance of Hymn to the Fallen by composer John Williams. Capping off the ceremony was the sounding of taps, performed by the alumni band's own Kenny Beershank, who had the honor of breathing new life into a trumpet owned by U.S. Sergeant Richard Wank, a World War II veteran who carried the trumpet on D-Day in 1944. The cemetery lies among the hedgerows in rolling farm country of southwest Normandy, near the border with Brittany and France. It is the final resting place of 4,410 American soldiers who lost their lives in Normandy and Brittany after the D-Day invasion. We marveled at the beauty of the Memorial Chapel, designed to reflect the ecclesiastical architecture of Brittany and constructed with limestone from the region. At its east end is a sculpture group representing youth triumphing over evil with the inscription, in memory of the valor and the sacrifices which consecrate this soil. We got to the first cemetery service. Um, our bus was a little bit late due to some natural logistic issues in France. As the leader of the alumni band at that time, you know, my goal was to make sure that our bus got there and got there on time because as a young musician growing up, my father always said, you do not miss a downbeat. And by God, I wasn't going to let Scott Hanna miss a downbeat. <laughs> I wanted to tell you that I was 16 years old when I heard President Roosevelt telling us that the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor and also that we were at war. I didn't even know where Pearl Harbor was. Our bus got there five minutes before downbeat. And I can only imagine what was going through his head at that time. There was a certain sense of um, weighty responsibility, if you will, to make that go well because that we had one opportunity to do it and the people who were there were deserving of our very best collectively. And so I did feel that. Um, and then also the, just the feeling of how exciting it is to see and hear all of these people together and to think that I got to be in the presence of that and be a participant in that, very humbling. It's literally downbeat time, and I see Scott climb up the ladder. And he's, the backdrop from my perspective is that um, I'm seeing a huge crowd behind Scott. And there's this incredible chapel that is his backdrop. 
Allied flags all around, military uniforms, the, the Stetson hats, the orange sea of alumni band members, and he slowly raises up his arms to, to begin the national anthems for the Allied countries. It was the first time Scott presented himself with the alumni band wearing the black hat. And everybody that knows the alumni band and the meaning of the black hat, that has a lot of meaning and, and significance to the alumni band. That was such an emotional point for me that I literally could not play, except just to soak in that moment and appreciate those things. Obviously, the opportunity to even be in the American Cemetery at Brittany is a humbling experience, just to be in the space as an individual. To be in the space with musical comrades, whether they be members of the Longhorn Alumni Band family or all of those high school musicians or the wonderful choruses that were there, that was something special to be in that, in that place. And then to see how they were arrayed in that space was a beautiful visual thing as well. So that was a very stirring experience uh, for me uh, to see that and then to hear the, uh, the wonderful sounds that they all made together on essentially no rehearsal time. The landing may have been toughest at Omaha Beach, where very little went as planned. American fighters scrambling ashore were met with German landmines and machine gun fire. Stormy seas made for perilous beach landings, sometimes far off course, and many amphibious tanks sunk before reaching land. Combat engineers landed off target and without their equipment. Paratroopers were either blown far off their marks, swamped in man-made lagoons, or made easy prey for snipers as they drifted toward the ground. Munitions explosions were so hot the sand melted into glass balls. Experts say glass will pepper the beach for 200 years, but still they persisted. And by nightfall, Omaha was in Allied hands. The Normandy American Cemetery at Omaha Beach was the first American cemetery created on French soil on a bluff overlooking the beaches of Normandy. More than 9,000 brave souls are buried here with another 1,500 commemorated and 300 unidentified, known only to God. The Longhorn Alumni Band led a second magnificent memorial ceremony to remember the fallen and to celebrate our veterans. Travelers had the opportunity to experience and feel the waves, hear the sounds, and embrace the ambiance of the shores our American boys landed on in Normandy. Many band members gathered capsules of sand as mementos of the day, while others took a solemn walk along the beach for a moment of reflection. Going to big events and making big um, trips um, in a very large spectacle was not something, it, it's not foreign to them. They're, they're used to that, and that comes from the days of them marching in the Longhorn Band. So we knew when the opportunity for Normandy to come along, we knew that this was something that we could tackle. We knew that this was some, an opportunity that we could, we could seize and enjoy and, and, and have our uh, alumni band members experience something really special. <laughs> Type and attitude uh, amongst members of the Longhorn Band family, uh, that's never a problem for us. We're, we're well practiced at those things. We, we shift into that mode quite nicely. It, it was interesting to see what happened to us collectively as we moved through the trip. Obviously the front part of the trip had a great seriousness and solemnity to it that we were there to be in service to others. And of course our experience in the Longhorn Band, usually what we're doing is we're being of service to others, but in a very boisterous, enthusiastic sort of way at a sporting event. This was clearly not that. Well done, Longhorns. Well done. Congratulations. You should be proud of your efforts. 
You should take a lot of pride in what you did today. You should take pride in what you brought to the experience of the people that attended this ceremony and yesterday's ceremony. We are here in large measure because of what people did in this place 75 years ago. Let's bear that in mind. Let's continue to treat one another with gentleness and respect and regard in those moments of frustration. We are here to celebrate as a family. We're here to have fun. We're here to enjoy an experience that few others will ever have. Not only in this place, but in our very special community of the Longhorn Band. The Alumni Band is really not just a band day organization. Um, we're bigger than that. Um, we've done a great many things over the past years, since 1964. And to, to take a trip to Normandy, although it's logistically challenging, it was not something that was foreign to us. And it's something that uh, everybody knew that we could accomplish and, and have a really good time. And I think a majority of the members that uh, were on this trip um, are relishing in the fact that they had an opportunity to experience something that nobody else will have another chance to experience because there's only one 75th anniversary of D-Day. So um, it's what we do. It's what we do. <laughs> it's what we do. It's what we do. After we performed um, the services, we had a short time where we could walk around the grounds of the cemetery, um, seeing the different headstones from our servicemen that served back in the 1944, and those who never left the beach of Normandy, they're, they're still there. And seeing our alumni band members take time to appreciate that, and to me, that synopsizes the entire trip of what we were there to do, and that was to remember our, our allied veterans and our, our American boys that didn't make it home back then. Another historic World War II location, Sante Mariglis, claims the distinction of being the first town in France to be liberated from the Nazis. It had been the site of Allied air raids and paratrooper landings during the first few months of 1944 as the Allies sought to claim the town as a strategic crossing point. As luck would have it, on the night of June 5th, a large house in the town square caught fire. The townsfolk formed a human chain passing buckets of water to fight the fire, in the process creating a huge distraction. American parachutists began landing. As illustrated in the 1962 John Wayne film, The Longest Day, one ill-fated paratrooper landed in the middle of town, his parachute caught on the side of a church steeple. The Allies reclaimed the little town in the early morning hours of June 6, and as a show of gratitude, an effigy of paratrooper John Steele remains to this day hanging on the church tower. Inside the church is a stained glass window of the Virgin Mary surrounded by paratroopers. The Stars and Stripes has flown over the town each year as part of its spirited D-Day celebration, which includes a well-attended parade through the middle of town. Well-wishers and tourists filled the parade route through the tiny village. French children raised their little fingers in a hook 'em horns sign and called out, Happy Texas! Our alumni band performed in the parade in its best tradition, full of fanfare and excitement, playing music of a more festive and celebratory nature, such as March Grandioso, the Wabash Cannonball, and March of the Longhorns. An impromptu gathering at the end of the parade route served as a perfect backdrop for the band to perform one final rendition of the Eyes of Texas and Texas Fight for the onlookers and fans from Sante Mar Iglesia. Things that I would have loved to have be different about the trip. 
I think more time to really take in those amazing historical places where we were. We were there to, to do a job and to be performers and we did a great job of that. And there was some time for us to do that, but I think probably everyone on the trip would agree that we would have liked to have even more time to truly take in where we were, to really think about and experience where we were. Being on a bus, this modern form of transportation, driving through these very old towns with streets that were not designed for current modes of transportation, it was a little historically surreal, actually, um, yeah. to think that, well, here we are cruising along in relative comfort in these buses um, that no one could have imagined when these towns were established and certainly no one was thinking about when this land was being fought for by the opposing sides in the war, you know, that our relative comfort and isolation from all of that was a little strange to think about. The parade in Saint-Marie-Glise uh, turned out to be a beautiful, beautiful day, which we just could not have, have scripted that. It was out of central casting for sure. And to then be in that tiny town with a really ludicrous number of people packed into it was really something. And I think the thing that I'll remember the most about that experience is when the band finally got to the parade route where it begins to go downhill into the town and looking down into the town and seeing that volume of people in this tiny place that was really a great moment and to see how much fun all those people were having and how excited they were about what was happening to them and what was about to happen to them that was great fun We modulated our experiences and our usual mode of being and did it beautifully. And I think in some ways that just increased the appetite for when do we get to do the thing that we usually get to do and love to do. And so to have that channeled then into this experience of a parade, which every member of the Longhorn Band has had lots of experience with over time, to get to do it in a really special place on a beautiful day for a large and appreciative crowd, that was, it was quite the release, I think, for everyone on that trip. Here the University of Texas. The University of Texas In nineteen forty four, D Day's June successes at Normandy had had little practical effect on the inland capital city of Paris, which remained under Nazi control. By mid-August 1944, Allied troops pushed the exhausted Nazi army back toward Germany. On August 20th, the Germans fled Paris, taking France's collaborating Vichy regime leader with them.
resistance fighters took City Hall. A victorious Charles de Gaulle marched his troops down the Champs-Élysées, stopping at Notre Dame to gratefully give thanks for the city's liberation. The alumni band was scheduled to play a Texas-sized finale at the Eiffel Tower, but French authorities prompted President Macron to change the venue to a lower-profile wooded amusement park at the Jardin Acclimatation, under the impressive backdrop of the Louis Vuitton Foundation building. Strolling families in the park enthusiastically gathered for the band's final European parade and concert. This performance would be the last time the Longhorn Alumni Band performed the national anthems of France, Canada, and the United States. Hymn to the Fallen and the Texas traditional tunes capped off with the eyes of Texas. These were the final moments for members to say goodbye to one another as departures back home to the States would commence the next day. We spanned seven decades of members that were on this trip. The oldest member was 82. The youngest member was four years old, uh, a, a traveler. For them to be able to come together and build a friendship with one another for people that they had never met. I mean, there were people that were on this trip that I only knew them by name until I literally met them in Normandy, France. You know, that performance in the square was interesting because it was a little bit unanticipated. It wasn't entirely clear in the planning that that would necessarily happen or what the scope of it would be or what they might either want us to do or allow us to do. So there was a, there was a certain amount of impromptu to that, if you will. But I think it also really connects into this business of how things progressed musically and emotionally for us in the course of the trip, that that really culminated our experience, that we got to be ourselves in our most comfortable way. This is the way we're so accustomed to being together. This is music that is arguably the most dear to us, the thing that we enjoy playing together the most and look forward to performing together the most. To see and hear that happening amongst that amazing collection of people and to be thinking about what this means for the future, that was a special feeling really not like any other time in my life. And so perhaps long after specific memories have faded, that feeling will be there. Everybody was coming together and meeting one another and making friends um, and having the opportunity that they have to visit with people that we all have one commonality and that's that we played in the Longhorn Band. I think that my lasting impression of this trip and my lasting feeling about this trip will be that it was an inflection point for the Longhorn Band family. It was a trip like no other band trip ever. And I think that it taught us something about ourselves and I think that it taught us to aspire to more than we have. We've done great things over the years, but to have a reminder that as wonderful as the things that we do are and as proud as we are of our experiences, there's more, we can do more, we can do better, and we will. I would be delighted to join the Longhorn Alumni Band anywhere they go, uh, if at all possible. Uh, I couldn't think of a finer group to be associated with or to have a lot of pleasant leisure time together with. I would go on a moment's notice. The experience that people had, I think, was something that, uh, that they will cherish forever. And so that, you know, there's really not much that I can add to that aspect, you know, so. I hope everybody had a great time. He does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a minor thing, but I just want to be remembered as, a, as always expecting good things and being an optimist. 
I've always believed uh, it, things happen for the good, and I always think I, I always think that good things are going to be in the future. And I've always had this optimism. I kind of look at everything with a smile instead of a frown. And that, that as they say in the story, uh, the glass, for me, the glass is always half full. participation in the historic 75th anniversary left enormous amounts of goodwill and great memories for both the Americans and the French people in northern France. From the University of Texas at Austin, our proud state of Texas, and the United States of America. <laughs>